Shall we start? Yes. Okay, guys, next session is going to be about scalable cloud ID with Eclipse Chair and OpenShift by Sandeep Abashio and Eugene Ivanza. Yes, hello. As I just said, my name is Sergey, and uh, this is Eugene, and uh, we are at Hatters. We come from Ukraine, and today we are going to talk how uh, you can boost the power of Eclipse Chef with OpenShift to build integrated development environment to define uh, organization, teams, and permissions for fine granted access to resources of your clusters. First of all, about Eclipse Chair. Eclipse Chair is a project on the Eclipse Foundation. 90 people already made a contribution to this project. We already made a 96 releases. And we are web-based integrated development environment. You may start thinking how this tool can be a benefit to the EDE, what you're using right now, like IntelliJ. Does we have more features like IntelliJ have? Or like if, if you're using Vim, is it faster? Or is it use less memory? And stuff like that. And for most cases, it will be no. And we are not trying to compete with this, 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 this products. We are trying to solve a bit different problem. So many, many production environments right now is about the cloud containers and microservices. And developing in the local host manure, you can no longer go in that way. Because if you go uh, developing in the local host manure, you can quickly run in the problems than updating production because there is no guarantee that your app that you are developing locally will behave exactly the same as you are developing in containerized world. I can give you an example from our life. We are developing feature for EDE when we put the output of a user application inside of EDE and everything goes well in development and we are demoing it on the staging and towards the fail in production. And the cause of that fail was we forgot about the HTTPS. So production run in that time in HTTPS, but developers use HTTP in most of the cases, and we can't show the HTTP content in HTTPS uh, application. And we quickly start thinking about adding some infrastructure to solve that problem. And the problem actually the core problem was the developers run a develop application in a slightly different environment than it was in the production. And the Eclipse chair is all about the solving that problem. So let's start to go back and start thinking how we develop our application, how we, what we do to make uh, some contribution to, to the project. And that there is three core part of that. First is the sources, project sources. Everything starts from the sources. The second part is the ED or editor. You need an editor to modify your sources. And the third part of that is the runtime. If you're developing in Java, it can be Java virtual machine, or it can be Node.js application, or it's a browser, any runtime to run your application. This is three core parts. And right now, then you are developing it. Your workspace contains your files and configuration and EDE and runtime uh, stay behind it. But it's not this one thing. If you are looking at the colleague machine, you may found that if even if you have the same sources, his EDE can be slightly different and his runtime, let's say, a newer or different version and in most cases, it may be okay, but devil in the details, and sometimes it can matter. And the chair, idea of the chair is to connect all these three things in the chair workspaces. Then your projects and your runtime and your EDE comes together. Uh, speaking about runtime, the runtime uh, means that 
we have a rich API to run in a modern, uh, modern runtime like Red Hat, OpenShift, like Kubernetes, like Docker, and pretty much everything you can imagine as a production runtime right now. So what we are doing in the workspace, we take your recipe from the production, then from real production application, and combine it with sources. So each time you run your, your workspace, you are running in the same environment and you are running it in the production with sources. So that, that's the first part. Also, we adding to the workspace the commands you are usually doing, using to build your application, to compile your application, to package your application, to deploy your application. If your application contains the different parts like database, we may add commands to start database or stop it. The EDE also connected to the workspace. That means if for a particular project you need like, let's say, Java and uh, Subversion, the EDE will contain only this part. In a different project, you would say need Node.js and Git. Okay, EDA will be, contains only parts that you exactly need for a particular project. As I mentioned that uh, workspaces, it's like containers and pods, and you can get a terminal right away in the EDE, so you can run commands, uh, whatever you want. Uh, also, you can have a remote shell from your local computer to your machines in the cloud, so you can have the same experience and you are running commands in the terminal. And Eclipse Shea is not just a web-based editor. It has the modern intelligence with language support provided by LSP. And LSP is an initiative of Microsoft and Red Hat also participate in that, is to build the common protocol to deliver language specific feature to any client that support language server protocol. What does it mean? That means that if you have the, let's say, Python language server, it provides the same features for any client like Eclipse Che, Visual, source, Visual Studio source code, and uh, like Atom. And uh, as far as I know, there is an initiative for Eclipse Foundation to make the registry of the language servers. That means that you no longer need to write uh, support for any particular IDE like IntelliJ or like Eclipse. You just need to write a language server once and each editor with support the language server protocol can benefit the support of this particular language. So now we have the smart integrated environment and we, we want to bring the team together around this. So with help of Eclipse Chair and Keyclock, you can easily connect your organizational LDAP or any OS provider like GitHub to easily log in or register a new user. As well, you can define uh, team permissions to, uh, for which resources they can access for instance, uh, how much RAM they can use, how many CPU they can use, or how many workspaces they can run, etc., etc. As I mentioned, OpenShift is a one of the, our runtimes, and there is a couple of interesting features which provided them. It's like improving security. By default, all containers run in unprivileged modes without sudo. It means less security risk that someone wants to hijack your uh, environment. It has built-in uh, TLS support. It means that your connection between the browser and Eclipse Share are secured. It has the various uh, volumes types, so you can benefit from them and embedded HA proxy, so all your services are exposed with URLs. So I would like to ask Eugene to show us the light demo of that. You know it, to see how it looks like. Uh, thanks, Sergey. Uh, I've seen Che on, on your laptop. 
<laughs> You'll help me out uh, if I fail. Uh, so um, I'm the lucky one to go on with the most interesting part, actually showing what stack like chain, key cloak, and, and open shift as a mixture is. Uh, so I will, uh, I will demo what Eclipse uh, Che looks like when deployed on OpenShift, uh, namely OpenShift dedicated. I decided to take the risk and use a public OpenShift instance, so if uh, connection goes down, <laughs> excuse me, I've got a backup video. So um, I'll advertise Keycloak a little bit. Uh, we, we love this product. Uh, I'll demo Eclipse Che uh, itself and show you a magic button in Eclipse J with some uh, cool automation. All right, so uh, this is, uh, yeah, don't go to that URL. <laughs> uh, this is a public uh, OpenShift dedicated instance. Uh, Eclipse J can be deployed uh, on top of OpenShift container platform, OpenShift dedicated, Minishift, uh, um, Kubernetes implementation in, is on the way. Uh, so basically, we support all, all OpenShift flavors. Uh, this is how a running uh, instance of Eclipse Che, a multi-user flavor of Eclipse Che looks like. Uh, so here we've got uh, Che pod itself. It's a Tomcat server running inside the pod. Uh, the key cloak and <coughs> uh, PostRace database uh, to store data. So each deployment spawns a new pod and we use persistent volume claims to persist data across restarts and updates. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what Keycloak offers um, for Eclipse Chain. I log in as a Keycloak administrator. And, okay. Um, so when Chi is deployed, we automatically create uh, a Realm and a Chi public client. But most interesting part for users and admins uh, would be identity providers. So Keycloak as authentication server uh, offers you a lot of login, uh, login possibilities. So you can basically add a social login button within you know, uh, a minute or so, uh, provided that you register an application uh, on the um, uh, provider side. So I've prepared a uh, GitHub provider. So basically all you need is client ID and secret from, from GitHub and then callback URL. Um, enterprises would definitely appreciate uh, integration with LDAP. So this way, once connected and once all the filters are correctly set, you kinda can define which users have access to, to your running uh, Che instance. Uh, yeah, as, a, as, a, as an admin, you can also uh, manage your users, right? Uh, enable, disable them, set credentials and don't tell them, and wait for the ticket. So uh, this is Keycloak. Uh, Eclipse Che uses Keycloak to retrieve token and all of the APIs and client services have uh, login filters and uh, yeah, uh, we expect a key clock token in, in header requests. Good. Now let's take a look at Eclipse J. So uh, this is a public instance of OpenShift dedicated. So if you, if I could share that with you somewhere in the chat, you could log in with your GitHub account and everyone will get uh, own kind of space in Eclipse J. I'm already logged in in GitHub, so pressing this button should redirect me to user dashboard. Um, there is already a one running workspace, uh, just for the sake of time. Um, so Sergey uh, talked a lot about difference between traditional workspace and Eclipse Che workspace. Like your Eclipse workspace is just a folder on a file system with some dot project dot Eclipse files with configuration. In Eclipse Che, this is, uh, this is the IDE, the visual part. This is your runtime provided by either Docker Compose, Docker, Kubernetes, or OpenShift, which basically the same because we start uh, Kubernetes pods. So uh, 
uh, OpenShift does, doesn't differ in, in, in that regard. Um, so uh, let's create a workspace and um, we've got a few ready to go stacks like with, uh, with some popular technologies. You can choose between single machine and uh, multi-machine. So uh, in this case, that would be a list of Kubernetes objects. Like I need my application infrastructure needs five pods and you know, two of them are databases, one is reverse proxy, another is UI and uh, application server. So you can do that. Of course, we offer some simple uh, you know, ready to go stacks that you can take a look at and then author your own. Uh, you can add a stack from a recipe, and this is where the, the true power of comes in, because uh, right here you can copy and paste your production Kubernetes YAML if you deploy your application as a, as a pod <coughs> using Kubernetes. And uh, we'll grab that recipe and construct a runtime that will be identical, mostly identical uh, to what you have in, in production or or staging. Um, yeah, for this exercise I'll use a Java stack. Okay, and I need some project. I can use some samples here. I can use some public git URL, not necessarily GitHub. I can connect my GitHub account since I've got GitHub provider and have access to all my private repositories and have a list of repositories to choose from, or it can be a remote zip. Uh, let me add a uh, sample right here. Click create. Okay. What should have happened? Um, Oh, okay. Very impatient. Uh, yeah, so connection sometimes uh, is lost and uh, yeah, I've made five requests to create a workspace. Um, all right, so this is uh, how the ID uh, looks like. The workspace is in a starting space. And what's happening right now is... Uh, I'm just going to ask, can you reverse the colors? It's really hard to read the black here. Uh, <coughs> it's not too much it'll, it'll get better. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's by design. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's happening right now is um, you see that I've got uh, a new namespace created a few seconds ago. So Chase Server... Uh, is talking to OpenShift API through a client library and uh, uh, we have created a namespace and a pod as per recipe that I, I was providing in user dashboard. Uh, we also create a persistent volume claim to, to persist my projects across restarts because, because when I stop a workspace uh, this pod will will be destroyed. But next time I start it, my projects are there. And there are some uh, memory caps right here. Okay, um, let's get back to the <coughs> IDE. Um, <coughs> good. Let's open, open some Java file. So, um, there is a concept of project types in Eclipse J, and uh, depending on, on the project type, the IDE may change its look and feel and behavior, and uh, it will treat projects differently. So, this is a Maven, Java Maven project, and uh, IDE uses special icons for packages and icons for classes and interfaces. You can also see external libraries uh, uh, folder, and uh, this is where uh, Maven plugin uh, that's running inside this workspace. 
uh, it's watching changes in pom.xml and as you add dependencies they are downloaded and project class path is updated automatically for you so a typical feature a java developer uh, would expect in um, in a desktop ide uh, yeah you've got a terminal into your uh, pod so you can work as if you're your local host you can also uh, connect to this pod um, using OpenShift uh, CLI, like do OCRSH and, and get a shell uh, remotely using different terminal. Um, so let's take a look at, um, at this Java file. You can see syntax coloring, which is provided by the Orion editor. If I type something uh, stupid, uh, it will highlight the error and uh, suggest how I, I can fix it. Uh, there is um, code auto-completion. So basically, Java support right now is provided by our own solution. Not really our own solution, but it's uh, Eclipse JDT uh, that is running uh, as part of our workspace agent, wrapped with uh, APIs uh, so that we can make calls from the client side. Um, Okay, and Sergey has mentioned uh, language server protocol, and this is uh, why I need um, the <coughs> TypeScript language server. Um, for this workspace, um, it's a TypeScript project, and I, I have enabled uh, TypeScript language server for it. Um, and uh, currently in Eclipse, it's possible to run language servers uh, in the environment uh, that you're currently using, or it's possible to run them as sidecars. Uh, there are pros and cons of each, each approach. Uh, in this case, uh, the language server Yeah, just wanted to show you the that language server is running as a process inside a, work, a workspace, and um, uh, Eclipse has a uh, LSP compli compliant client that connects to it, and you can actually uh, see. No, you can't. Yeah, that will get stuck. Um, at this moment, uh, Java support is is being worked at as a as a language server. So JDTLS work is underway, and once done, it will be available for all uh, LSP compliant clients, uh, including Eclipse Chi. Um, uh, part of of the workspace. Uh, is a set of commands. So uh, you see here uh, the commands that instruct the ID on how to run and debug my project. Let's uh, use this one. So I have started a command that, that's called build and run. I want to build my Maven project, uh, copy, uh, build artifact into Tomcat web apps and actually start Tomcat. Um, I, somehow I need a preview for my web application and this is where we use IDE macro uh, that the client uses to translate them into actual paths or URLs. <laughs> Like uh, uh, the client can grab selection in the project tree, and uh, so if you if you take a look at this command, it's mvn minus f, and then we know where to where the root pom.xml is. Uh, the same with um, uh, preview URLs. Uh, in our case, this is an OpenShift uh, OpenShift root. 
and it is bound to a service and the OpenShift service uh, routes traffic to port 8080 where my workspace is running. Uh, let's click on it. So the app's working, that's good. Now, let's stop this command and try to debug this application without having to install anything, just my browser and, uh, and my workspace running as a pod. This command is pretty much um, uh, similar to the previous one. Uh, the Tomcat is started in GPD mode and listens to on, uh, on the socket. Uh, I will open debugger configuration. We support debuggers for PHP, Java, GDB, and Node.js. I will choose remote Java. And I know that my Tomcat is listening on port 8000. I am connecting to the debugger. OK. Let me resize it a little bit. OK. Uh, let's set a breakpoint. Good. So the app is stuck. Good. We've got uh, the, hit at the breakpoint. I can go here and interfere with my app logic. Not really logic, but change the value, resume, and see that uh, I've got my input in a, in a running app, all happening in my browser. Uh, let's hit the breakpoint again. Uh, there are typical features you see in any Java IDE, step into, step over, run to cursor, evaluate expression, you can um, add a watch expression. You can also uh, configure your breakpoints. Break um, right, so they, they'll be hit only if some conditions are met and you can specify uh, whether or not to suspend all threads or only current thread. So uh, features that a Java developer will um, appreciate. Okay, I'll um, stop the debugger. Um, of course, there is uh, Git support. Uh, there is also an SVN plugin, but it's not part of, uh, of a standard Eclipse build, but it's possible to edit. Uh, Git can be used both from, from the menu here and uh, uh, from the terminal. Let me show it to you. Or you can... Uh, so Git features are not worthy really uh, demoing, just maybe compare widget, something that uh, can help you visualize if I had a good connection. <laughs> Refresh, no it won't. Sorry for that. <coughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like connection is... Um, sad but true. Oh, we're lucky. All right. Um, so there, there are other ID menus uh, to work with files, create files and packages, um, different code assistants like refactoring. You can rename, remove packages and files and um, Java JDT will, will do it smartly for you. Uh, so I promised a um, magic button. Let's 
let's do that. So say I, I've worked on my, on my project um, in my workspace. I've built the perfect image for it. It has got all the software. I authored all of the commands on how to build, run, and debug it. And uh, say if I want to share it with all of you sitting here, um, the traditional way would be to write a long readme with uh, requirements, like you need Java, uh, well, you will need Git to, to, to clone it, you'll need Maven, you may need particular versions of, of this software for a particular project to run. With Eclipse, you can actually automate it and uh, make your project readily available together with this, with this runtime and the IDE in one single click. So uh, we call this magic button a factory. Uh, I will choose my Java workspace as a basis for the factory and click create. So what happened now is uh, we grabbed workspace configuration together with commands, with my environment recipe, with my project, uh, even branch or commit ID to, to check out too and saved it to this unique ID in our database. And when this URL is invoked, um, a user who clicks it will get an identical environment with the same commands, with the same project. So this way, Eclipse Chase trying to solve the problem, <laughs> it works on my machine and it doesn't work on yours. Even though our environments are kind of the same, but not really. Um, so you can see that the factory configuration uh, has commands, so you can instruct your users on how to build your project. Um, if, if we had to run a workshop here, I would start with, with a factory URL and say, hey everyone, click on it and you will get your developer environment just in a second. And there are also post load in actions. It means when, when your workspace is created, uh, the IDE can do some actions like open files and stuff like that. So in this factory, I want to uh, open pom.xml when, when a user first uh, sees the IDE. Okay, let's copy this URL. I'll paste it here. I will log out as a current user. <coughs> I will log out from GitHub as well. And click this link. So I'm, I'm a new user right now. I'm clicking this link. I'm using my GitHub account or I can use my email and password to register. I will use a different GitHub account. And what's happening now, oh, nice crane. Uh, what's happening now is that Eclipse Che, the, the, the master of the server, is constructing a replica of the original workspace. So if I were to share this link with you, you will get identical workspaces, identical projects, identical commands, and there are absolutely no chances that it fails for you. If it does, then it's me who screwed up the original workspace and I didn't do my job uh, very well as a DevOps or a team lead. Uh, and if you take a look at the OpenShift web console, you can see that uh, uh, a new namespace is created uh, a minute ago. So it's a separate pod, separate workspace, but same sources, same configuration, same recipe. So we are not, uh, this user is not in the same workspace as, as a factory author, right? But we're, we're using the same environment. And you see I didn't do anything to open pom.xml, right? It, the automation did it for me. Um, I could have added uh, commands like, uh, can you start the build process when, when the IDE opens? 
Like you click the button and Maven build starts right away. Or can you start a Tomcat when you open up your workspace automatically? Good, let's uh, take a look at what, what, what we can do here. Um, you see this uh, panel on the right. Uh, it's a pull request panel. So um, I can issue a pull request right from the IDE. Uh, let me, I don't know, change the version. I will add it to index. I will commit it as well. All right, so I will create a new branch. Good. Choose some title. And create a PR. Hopefully it works. So what happening now is Eclipse J is creating a fork of the original project in my GitHub account, right? The one I used to log in. It pushes a branch that I've created here with my changes that I've committed in that fork. And from that fork, a PR is issued to the original um, repository. So I can open it on GitHub. Okay, right? And we can see here is a nice button and it's actually another factory. So, uh, say as an owner of this web Java Spring project, I've received a PR, and in that PR, I've got a link to test it. And not really test it like what's the traditional way to review a PR. Well, I mean, <coughs> file change and you're looking at the code, but with um, Eclipse Chi, you can actually test it in and in, in runtime. Um, yeah, so when clicking on this button, yeah, the internet is down again. So, uh, yeah, that will create a new factory. Uh, and that factory will contain sources uh, with, with my changes. So it will check out to um, to my branch, or I can specify even a commit ID. Like, uh, so we call it a reviewer factory. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can publish these buttons in your repository readme instead of uh, writing down long instructions on what software you need to install locally. Yeah, but you, you'll need internet connection for that. Um, there is also a way to, mm, to invoke a factory and uh, waiting for GitHub, come on, okay. So this is my different repository <coughs> and in the root of that repository I've got a factory.json file. And it basically contains uh, factory configuration in, in JSON format and it's it's the same, like my recipe is my Docker image, uh, I need this project, I need all of those commands, build and run. And what I can do is um, I can copy this URL. If you take a look at the URL, uh, so basically, I am invoking uh, factory API and say that, hey, factory service, I've got this GitHub repository. Uh, can you go and try create a workspace for me based on that repository? So the service will look uh, for factory.json file in the root repository. And once found, uh, it will use it to create your workspace. So you can either uh, publish this hidden file in your repository or publish a button. But since, yeah, it's working now, perfect. So yeah, we'll see a crane again. And uh, as you can see, I've got more namespaces. So it's a quarantined environment. Each user gets his own pod, his own namespace. All, all projects are 
persisted. Uh, and since factory, like all of the all of Eclipse Chase services, both uh, uh, on on master on uh, workspace server side and workspace agent side are REST services, so you can call them with whatever clients you need, and that gives a lot of opportunities for integration. Like factory can be can be easily integrated into your CI CD, like. Uh, I don't know, Jenkins fail report uh, may contain a link to a factory and that factory will load a project uh, with a commit ID that actually broke the build. So you can debug it there and issue a PR or something. Um, yeah, I think I've covered most of it. Uh, if you have any questions, you're certainly welcome. No, the workspace is created uh, uh, in uh, in OpenShift. So the workspace is is a pod. is It's like it's it's a container. Mm -hmm. So it's created here. GitHub is used just as as a synchronization point. So in workspace configuration, we say that hey, we need this this project for the workspace. It's in workspace config, and we'll clone it. So uh, yeah, everything is is in here. So I got a question. So once you create a workspace and you share it with other users, and you need to propagate some change if you that's independence or something like this, is possible? Um, you can update your factory, uh, but that doesn't update all of the user's workspaces. So basically at this point you can use uh, like Git as synchronization point. So you, you push something to master and all of the people will just pull your, your changes. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, we often get a question about uh, pair programming uh, since this is a cloud IDE, you, you need to have it. So at this moment, Git is kind of the sync point for collaboration, but there are some uh, prototypes uh, uh, that are already working in the labs, not really ready to, to be published, but uh, yeah, in some, in some time we'll get uh, like pair programming capabilities, uh, the Google Doc style like with a uh, multiple cursors and, and stuff. And which language right now supporting? Um, well, honestly, Java is uh, is our number one language because it's written in Java, and you know, uh, uh, there are uh, it, it depends on 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 what you mean by language support. Like, if you mean uh, auto completion and dependency management, all of the IDE stuff. Yeah, so this is Java. We've got a uh, uh, very good uh, language server for TypeScript. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a good one for uh, C Sharp from Microsoft. So basically it's all about how mature, like whether, uh, whether there is a language server for your, uh, for your language and if it's mature enough, if it's stable enough. So there are like 40 language servers out there. Yeah, not all of them are production ready. Some of them are like pre-alpha and you know use with caution. Uh, so we're trying to add add the ones that are more or less stable. But it's uh, Java, it's TypeScript, it's um, PHP, Python. Uh, there is one for GoLang, but it doesn't have auto completion. Uh, though there is code navigation, go to definition, find usage, and stuff like that. And it is free. Well, OpenShift dedicated is not free, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you can you can deploy it uh, using uh, OpenShift Origin, which is open source, and Eclipse is an open source project. You can you can take it, play with it, uh, modify it, uh, sell it, whatever whatever you need to do with it. Speaking of open source, can you open the slide uh, to share the links? Yeah. So we are welcome you to see. Uh, on a GitHub. Yeah, so uh, GitHub.com Eclipse Che, uh, 
you'll find there are links to docs uh, with instructions on, on how to get started. Um, so the, the easiest way probably, the, it's, it's on Docker. It's like a simple Docker command and we'll, we'll run it. Uh, deploying on top of OpenShift is definitely, you know, like for serious uh, production use. But uh, you can start a Minishift instance and deploy it on Minishift and use it locally. You can use OpenShift container platform like OC cluster up and it will be just one node uh, OpenShift cluster that you can use in your intranet with uh, in, in company network or something. Or you can run it with Docker, you know, make your AP, uh, IP public and let everyone uh, log in and create workspaces. It's all a matter of resources. Like for OpenShift, uh, uh, OpenShift admin adds nodes, you know, as uh, capacities shrink, uh, more nodes are added. Uh, in Docker, uh, there is no scalability. So you can, you can have just one big instance with a lot of RAM, but not really, uh, we used to have uh, Docker Swarm implementation, and it's already uh, it's, it's still on uh, CodeEnvy.io uh, there. So we use uh, Swarm as an orchestrator, and this enables uh, scalability for us. Yeah. So uh, chdev at Eclipse.org is a is a mail list official one. You can talk to us on IRC <coughs> and Mattermost. Uh, yeah, feel free to try, create issues if you have questions. Uh, it'll be me who, who will show up to help you first, I think. Uh, yeah, don't hesitate to ask questions if you have any. No, no. Uh, language server protocol. It's a Microsoft, it's Microsoft. Initi initiative and many other distributors can write their own uh, language server. And as I said, there is an initiative on the Eclipse Source Foundation to make a registry yeah. of as many language servers as possible. So when you are writing new language, you can just write a language server and every... And all clients, like uh, uh, the rest standard protocol um, extensions and non-standard. And uh, so at this moment, Eclipse client supports uh, all the standard things that the language server protocol offers, right? Uh, if protocol changes, then clients have to change as well. And well, this process isn't very aligned at this moment, but uh, you know, the, the worlds uh, go in there uh, for sure. How the input to, from a source, suppose I need to take the input from a file and then process it and produce the output. So, uh, if question. you are going to select the file from the browser, it's fine. So it's usually for web development projects or it can be, you know, like the scripting and all, we can use it for something. Uh, not sure I got the question entirely. <laughs> um, basically, you can, you can run everything that runs in, in a Linux container uh, in Eclipse workspace. So I don't know if it's an answer good enough for you. Um, so if, if something runs and builds on, in Docker or OpenShift as a, as a pod, you can, you can do it here. Whether it's a web app or if it's a graphical application, um, that's not really well suited for uh, non-web apps, like scripts and web applications, okay, for like Java Swing apps or Python uh, graphical applications. There is a workaround, we start, um, we start a pod uh, with X server and VNC server, and then get a preview into, into that uh, pod using VNC client. And you can, like, you connect to a remote VNC server. So, well, uh, of course, uh, you, it's very network dependent and, you know, lagging can be substantial, so it's no, not really uh, an ideal use case for Che. Yeah. The question from the... Yeah, I was answered. Yeah. yeah. Please. Uh, I wanted to ask if you can connect the Eclipse Che with the uh, existing instance of people instead of the container. Yes. 
So yes, we, uh, the question was, uh, can we connect to the existed instance to a K clock? Yes. So basically, it's a part of configuration. You just need to provide the URL for for K, K, your K clock service, and it will be connected to it. Yeah. So uh, and already a couple of uh, uh, a couple of users have done that, and I have tested it like uh, using K clock from from that instance and running Minishift locally. So, uh, yeah, and we expect this to be a natural use case. Like, we, we deploy our own key cloak, the clean one, but enterprises would obviously try to use their own key cloak that is wired to their LDAP and their identity management systems. So, yeah, that's possible. It's all a matter of configuration. So, I have one more question. Can you use multiple browser windows with the different prospects? Different browser windows? Yeah. Because I use like multiple browsers <coughs> and uh, I like I use setups and I, I spread like multiple views or perspective like I don't know outline or open zone to have it in a separate window on different uh, So the question was the can we use the multiple browser windows to develop the same application? Well um, it's not like a an inbuilt feature, but you can you can open multiple tabs of a same workspace and for example, you know, change their uh, the layout and have just one big terminal in one tab and just editor in another tab. Uh, yeah, but, but nothing like, you know, right click and open a new tab. Might be an interesting feature though. <laughs> Okay, we're last, saying last, last question. question. No. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. Feel free to check out the project, try it, ask questions, and let us know what you think. Thank you. Thank you.